So the theme for uh, 2020 is Be Thou My 2020 Vision. And uh, today I'll be talking about how sometimes people can pull us away from that vision of fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And we'll talk about how uh, there are blind guides out there. And Jesus describes some of them in our passage. Um, today, um, I've, I've kind of changed the scripture a little bit. So I'm going to have us read together from the front cover of your bulletin the last passage, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. But I'm going to read uh, some more from Matthew 15 that's not in your bulletin. So I wanted to uh, read that myself. Before we do that, let's uh, we we please stand for our prayer of illumination and the reading of God's word. Let's pray. Lord, we are not here by accident. We have been led here by your Holy Spirit, and your Holy Spirit has inspired Scripture. But now, inspire us and open our eyes and our ears and our hearts. To you, O oh Lord. Give us ears to hear and hearts to respond to your word. In Christ's name, amen. So hear the word of God first from Matthew 15, different selections. Then some of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are but rules taught by men. And then he replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They are blind guides. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. And now from Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, let us read this together. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So a few months ago, Forty years ago, Kay and I went on our honeymoon to Nassau in the Bahamas. I had scraped together every penny I had. I didn't have time to buy the tour books or pay guides or anything, really. So we just went up to uh, Nassau and kind of explored it ourselves. And at the top of Nassau is this fort, Fort Charlotte. And we went up to the fort and just kind of started looking around. And this young man came up to us. And he started telling us about Fort Charlotte. He told us about battles that went on there. And he told us about the history of Nassau and the history of the people who lived in the Bahamas. And it was really interesting stuff. And at the end of it, I said, well, where did you learn all this stuff? He said, well, I just listened to the real tour guides. And then he, he said, but I would like a tip. So I gave him a tip. We gave him a tip. And... Then after he received the tip, he said, you know, I really made a lot of that stuff up. <laughs> and I said, thanks, it was great. <laughs> he was a blind guide. He didn't know what he was doing, he was just making stuff up. And, and there are people in life that make stuff up and will tell you to believe what they have to say. That's what the Pharisees were to Jesus. He called them blind guides because... They were making stuff up and giving these extra rules upon the people to follow in their way. Rules that weren't in the Bible, that they just added to the scriptures. And there are people today who will try to get you to follow their words of advice, but they don't know where they're going. They have no destination. They have no purpose, but they want you to come with them regardless. Jesus is subtly saying that truth matters. And that there is such a thing as truth. It's important to stay on the path and not to follow the blind guides, to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. It doesn't matter where people guide you or what they say. 
when Jesus' criticism of people being blind guys, blind guys wouldn't hold water. So it, it matters what people say. It matters where people lead you in life. That's what Jesus was saying in this, in this story. In our day, often the people who are blind guides are those who give advice but leave God completely out of the picture. It is important to have guides in life. It's important to have people give you advice. The Bible even says, with many advisors, plans succeed. And it's important to listen to other people and to listen to, to God guiding us in life. And how does God guide us? He guides us through his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit leads us and the Bible says convicts us. And he often does that, most often he does that through scripture. Um, millions would testify that the Holy Spirit leads us in making decisions through Scripture, but also guides us through the tough times of life. And there are tough times in life that we need to be led through by Scripture and by the Holy Spirit. God guides us through other people, seeking godly counsel, maybe coming to worship or Sunday school and talking to people about some decision you have to make or about how to get through the tough times of life, the grief and the heartaches and the sadness of life that sometimes comes. And God guides us through providence. You know, making decisions often come through providence, what we're able to do, what God has given us through his providence to do, but also through the opening and closing of doors, God guides us in, through those things. So, for example, when Jesus called his first disciples, that was an opportunity, an open door for them to answer God's call, and they took it. And sometimes God opens doors for us, for us to take it. And sometimes God closes doors for us. Uh, the Apostle Paul, for example, wanted to go to other parts of Asia, but he said the Holy Spirit would not let me go. How did the Holy Spirit not let him go? He couldn't get on a ship. He couldn't get things right. Not everything was going wrong for him to go to Asia. But at the same time, the Holy Spirit seemed to prompt him to go to Europe. And so he brought the gospel to Europe because he couldn't go to the part he wanted to go to. God closed the door to Asia and opened the door to Europe at that time. Sometimes God closes and opens doors for us. One of the greatest guides in American history, one of the earliest folk heroes of American history, a real person, is a guy named Daniel Boone. Uh, Daniel Boone was a famous guide, and he was born to a Quaker family in Pennsylvania, lived most of his life in North Carolina, but also blazed the wilderness trail into the Ohio Valley and into Kentucky. And he was known as one of the greatest pioneers and guides of his time and of history. And Daniel Boone would say that he, he saw God in one of his last letters, he talked about how he, he saw God as his great guide, guiding him through life. But he also persevered. And this is something that we are missing in our society today, is the ability to persevere through the tough times. If Daniel Boone had given up, he wouldn't be seen as a great guide today. But he had, his oldest son was killed trying to de deliver supplies to him when he was on one of his guiding trips. His youngest son was killed in the American Revolutionary War in the, one of the very last battles by the British in the American Revolutionary War. His daughter was kidnapped by the Shawnee, and he had to go and rescue her a lot like Abraham rescued Lot. But he, he went and rescued her, though outnumbered, and brought her back home. He himself was captured by the Shawnee and was tortured and was then adopted by the Shawnee into their tribe. But when he heard that the Shawnee were going to attack Boonesboro, where some of his relatives and his friends were, he escaped from the Shawnee. He persevered and escaped through the, from the Shawnee and went to Boonesboro and warned them of the impending attack that rescued the town. He persevered. We need to persevere. When we talk about God guiding us, it's not just that God leads us to the left or to the right or in making a decision. It's that God guides us through the valley of the shadow of death. 
And when you're facing the tough times in life and the times of grief and the times of sadness or when you don't know where to go, persevere and don't give up. Put your hope in God and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Let your vision be on him and let him guide you through the tough times of life. Let him lead you. It's important that we believe that God can guide us and he will, if we look to him, guide us in life. There are some guides who are blind and there are some guides who are not blind. Four times the Pharisees are called blind guides, blind guides by Jesus. Uh, once in this passage, uh, he says, uh, they are blind guides, leave them alone. They don't know what they're doing. If a blind, if a blind man leads another blind man, they're going to fall into a ditch or into a pit. They don't know where they're going. Don't follow somebody who's blind. And then another time he, he talks about the Pharisees as blind guys. He says, uh, you swallow, you strain out a gnat, but you swallow a camel. You strain out a gnat, but you swallow a camel. In other words, they pay a lot of attention to detail, but they are missing the big overall picture of the love of God. And an example of that is found in John 9, where the, the Pharisees uh, were criticizing Jesus for healing a blind man. They didn't like the way and the timing of his healing this blind man. And they missed the overall picture that the blind man was healed. They were criticizing him for how he did it, that he did it on the Sabbath, or he made some mud and this kind of thing. And they missed the overall picture. And there's some people who are so focused on the details and how you do things in life, they miss the bigger picture of love and of the grace of God. And they are blind guides. And there are some people who would love to lead you in the wrong path and let you be lost just like they are, who say there is no purpose in life. And there are lots of educated people out there who will tell you that everyone is blind. Nobody knows what they're doing in life. Nobody has seen God. There is nobody to lead you in life. You're just lost. They will tell you that. If you Google it, you'll find that in some of the answers about finding purpose in life. They'll say, your guess is as good as mine. And when you say that kind of thing, you're saying there's no purpose. There's no design. There's no hope. There's no meaning. And when you say that, you take away from the joy of life, the hope of life, and the purpose of life. Blind guides in our day, I say again, are those who claim to see but don't know where they're going. For many people, they don't believe it matters, and they're adamant that you cannot tell them the right path. And so I, I've heard people who give their testimony and talk about how much Jesus has meant to them and how he has opened their eyes in life, and they'll say, oh, no, 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 you can't say that. He really hasn't. And they insist that nobody knows where they're going. There's no need to persevere. There's no need to be strong in the hard times. And they're leading us in the wrong direction to a life of destruction. There's an old parable that's often used to people who say that everybody's blind. It comes from uh, India, from Hinduism. And it's a parable about uh, several blind, man, blind men describing an elephant to a king. And one blind man puts his hand on the elephant and said, an elephant is like a wall, solid. Another blind man holds the elephant's trunk and says, you've heard this before, I'm sure, almost everybody has. Another blind man ho holds the elephant's trunk and says, an elephant is like a snake. Another blind man holds the elephant's foot and says, the elephant is like a tree trunk because it's so big. And the, the moral of the story is everybody just has a little piece of the puzzle. Nobody can see the overall picture. And sometimes that's held up to Christians saying, they see, everybody's blind. Nobody really can see. But the problem with that parable that you have probably heard, and if you haven't heard it, you will hear it. The problem of that parable is this. It assumes that we are the king who can see the whole elephant. And we can see these people trying to figure it out, and we know they can't figure it out. 
and we put ourselves above everybody else who is blind. It's an, it's an arrogant thing to do. We can see better than all religions. We can see better than all truth. And we know that everybody is blind. The problem is the king sees. Tim Keller put it like this. How could you know that each blind man only sees part of the elephant unless you claim to be able to see the whole elephant? How could you possibly know that no religion can see the whole truth unless you yourself have the superior comprehensive knowledge of spiritual reality you just claim that none of the religions have? The message of Christianity has never been, it has never been, everyone is blind to the truth of God except for us. That's not the message of Christianity. That's self-arrogance. That's self-righteousness. Rather, Christianity believes that there is a king who can see the whole elephant, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus sees the whole picture. He sees around the corners in life. He sees around the bend. He sees where you are going. And he would like for you to be on the right path. He is the way, the truth, and the life. We need a guide, not just a bunch of people who claim that nobody can see. It is important to trust in God's guidance. Why? Because without God's guidance, we don't know where we're going, and we can often give up in the tough times of life. There's a hopelessness in our culture today, and it's rising. As faith goes down, hopelessness goes up, and it shows in many different ways in the huge increase of drug abuse in our culture, even among the upper middle class, and the huge increase of suicide rates. You know that suicide rates have uh, doubled since the year 2000 among teenagers, and it's gone up 24 percent for the overall population. We've had it in our own community in this last week. The sadness of people giving up. Even Christians can give up if we take our eyes off Jesus. There's so much sadness in life. It can easily overwhelm us if we don't keep our eyes fixed on the author and perfecter of our faith. God wants us to persevere and to have hope and to rest in his love. You know, one of my favorite verses is the verse that we read this morning. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And that's the key. Trust in him with all your heart. Don't lean in your own understanding because you don't understand it all. You don't see the whole elephant. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will direct you if you trust in him. And he'll direct you not just in your decision making, but in your going through the dark valleys, the dark valleys of divorce, the dark valleys of grief, the dark valleys of heartache. God can see you through those darkest of times if you hold on and persevere and trust in him. Take his hand, listen to his voice. If you believe that love is better than indifference, then trust in God. If you believe that life is a gift and not just an accident, then trust in God. If you believe that God has a plan for you and you're not just a rat going through a maze, Trust in God and let him lead you and guide you through the valley of the shadow to the presence, the green pastures, the still waters. Let him teach you the way you should go. He is not a blind God. I asked the elders of, of our church at the officer retreat, how many of y'all have noticed that the cross on top of the honor tower moves just a little bit? If you've ever noticed that the cross on top of the honor tower moves, raise your hand. About a, about a fourth of you have. That's good. You're, you're observant. But let me also say there's some people that every time that cross moves an inch, it drives them crazy. And uh, when, when they first put that cross on the, on the honor tower just a few years ago, um, they said, if we tighten this up tight, it'll be facing kind of catty corner. So we think it'd be better if, if we leave it a little loose. He said, they said it'll never come off. It's got this huge bolt on the inside and a nut about that thick on the top of it. 
but it moves ever so slightly with the wind or when a bird lands on it. And uh, sometimes it'll be facing this way, sometimes it'll be facing that way or that way or that way. And I told the officers at the retreat, that's a good image of what our faith should be like and what LMPC should be like. It's firmly anchored. It will never fly off. It's solid. But it turns with the wind. Some, sometimes we want to turn with the problems of life, to face the winds of life, the problems of life head on. But let Christ be our anchor. And don't give up. Don't give up on your perseverance and your hope. But let that hope help you as you face the winds and the problems of life. Let God guide you. Trust in him with all your heart. And don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path.